is The Chris Abraham Show. This is Chris Cast slash The Chris Abraham Show, Season 5, epi- Episode 15, and today is like a part two to yesterday's controversial, if anybody were to listen to it, episode about uh, opt-in eugenics. Now, I decided to make this yesterday, but I was encouraged today because I'm watching uh, a video on YouTube by uh, Brett Cooper called Fitness is Fat Phobic, apparently. Uh, the the uh, channel, I think, is the comments section with Brett Cooper. And it's talking about, like, for example, one of the quotes was... Uh, being fat is black and being skinny is white, that kind of thing. And I think that the most dangerous thing about the identity politics is that it's a two-edged sword. Now, coming out proud of being fat, uh, to reveal things to you, I'm six foot three and 300 pounds, uh, six months ago, I was six foot three and three hundred fifty pounds. I lost fifty pounds, so I can speak to fatness, obesity, extreme obesity, and fat phobia. Uh, to me, actually, being fat has been an amazing uh, opportunity to be invisible. Uh, fat people are invisible, uh, or fat people are people's friends, not people's crushes. Like, I like that. That makes me happy. Because whenever I'm anybody's crush, I tend to get into relationships and they drive me crazy. So, but it is damaging my health. It is damaging my joints. It is damaging uh, my success in the world and so forth. I think that while it's important that we empower people's happiness in their own bodies, whether they're fat bodies, whether they're trans bodies, whether they're uh, short bodies or tall bodies, whether they're flat bodies or curvy bodies, uh, whether they're brown, black, white, red, yellow, and those are two things that I can't say anymore. They're black, brown, and white bodies. Um, You should be. You should be proud to have tattoos on your face and your neck and uh, tramp stamps on your lower back. You should be proud to put spacers in your ears or wear uh, a bull's nose ring. You should be proud to color your hair or shave your head or rock a mullet or have a comb over, or wear a wig, or wear a toupee. Like, all these things you should be happy with. But, what I'm afraid of is that there are still predators in the world. There are powerful predators in the world who want people to show their, show themselves not to be gray man, gray woman, gray person anymore. Hey Google, What is the gray man theory? On the website 511tactical.com, they say, Gray man theory is based on the premise of blending into a crowd or your surroundings to not attract unwanted attention. The reality for a true gray man is that they are, in fact, prepared for any situation, but they don't appear to be to the untrained eye. People also ask me, how to become a gray man. Want to hear the answer? Yes.
do not know what happened. I think that things are recording. Uh, anyway, I think that that was the uh, gray man thing I talked about last. So the gray man theory is that you uh, are able to be your, you know, you take down your freak flag, right? So, for example, gray man is typically used by people who conceal carry firearms. So if you have a uh, concealed carry Glock 19 appendix carry or hip carry or uh, inside the waistband carry, there's a lot of signifiers that can make people think that you are concealed carrying. Uh, boots, like tactical boots, um, uh, cargo pants, uh, uh, like like caravan like um, vests um, wearing your blouse shirt having tactical shades looking like a um, black water contractor looking military or whatever like toning it down to just a pair of khakis and a bloused button-down shirt um, and a pair of Ray-Bans and a baseball cap with, uh, you know, a pair of athletic shoes would be more gray men. For example, uh, when I went to the Capitol uh, a few months ago, last fall, I went wearing a, um, a Hill People Gear chest rig and a, um, a GORUCK backpack that was uh that had all the molly webbing on it it was uh um a tropical camo and with the chest rig with the tropical camo backpack people you know people when i was too close to the capital looked at me like i could have been a january 6 extremist right so for example being a gray man, if you're a crazy white supremacist, means that you don't wear polo shirts and khakis and carry around a tiki torch um, and, you know, and uh, those sorts of things, right? So being a gr gray person, a gray they, being a gray they means that you can be trans, you can be gay, you can be bi, you can be a hipster, you can be um, uh, a furry, you can be all these things. Uh, you can be gay, lesbian, trans, all these things. Just like RuPaul, right? RuPaul, for 80% of his time, is being a bald, skinny black guy. 20% uh, of his time, he brings out his beautiful plumage. And uh, uh, when he's in a safe environment, a safe environment like a club or a soundstage or a TV or etc., he allows his complete freak flag to fly. However, um, being the gray man, it basically, or gray they, I'll call it a gray they, means that you have a less likely chance or won't be targeted by someone who is looking out for a right-wing extremist or looking out for a left-wing extremist. I guarantee you, I understand Antifa is just an idea. and There's not real Antifa. There's no anti-fascists as part of a anarchist or a Maoist or a Marxist ideal going out and creating havoc to foment um, leftist revolution in America. I believe that they're just spontaneous people. But they were a lot of black and stuff, but I guarantee you when they're off the riot path uh, or off the um, activism path, I guarantee you all their mass and ba balaclavas and all those things go into their backpack and all they are is a skate rat, right? So there's great benefit in being able to retreat away from being an obvious target. Now, the next thing I'm going to say is an, is an illustration by my sweet, beautiful, 
as a young woman Catholic mom. Uh, but this, I don't want to slut shame anybody. I don't want to ever suggest that what you wear means that you deserve to be raped or targeted or assaulted or defamed or catcalled or whatever. But my mom was brought up, brought up very traditionally Catholic, and my nana called my mom a slut just because my mom had naturally full lips. And she's like, um, you are damned by having those naturally full lips, you slut. So apparently only thin-lipped women could be, uh, could be godly. Probably just awful, awful mother, daughter, terribleness. But I know for a fact that not all mothers and daughters are terrible to each other. So anyway, my mom told me this advice, which was advice that she should have given to her daughter, but R.I.P. Uh, Tara on Abraham was never to be. She was a miscarriage very late in my mother's pregnancy. But to this day, I still know my sister in heaven is Tara, Tara, Tara Ann Abraham, Tara on Abraham. So my mom used to say that she wore strappy little heels. She wore uh, LBDs and cocktail dresses. She dressed to the nines. She gussied up in Manhattan. She lived in Manhattan. But when she was going hither to thither, she was always in a, a giant overcoat and wore a hat and glasses and maybe a headscarf, a, uh, you know, a, a, a silk scarf on her head. Like she burk it up. She always burk it up for transport. If she was going to be on the street... She was not going to be uh, tiptoeing around in a little little black dress, a hot little mama, on the street. She always burk it up in a big overcoat uh, um, and a head covering and, and that sort of thing. She was being uh, a gray woman. She was making herself uh, not a target. Now, the point of pride is that one needn't be a target anymore. Now, I believe that. I believe, uh, I used to tell this to Michelle. I said, um, my girlfriend Michelle was assaulted a few times. And she said that it wasn't fair. She's five feet tall and a hundred pounds soaking wet. Beautiful girl. Adorable figure, sweet, open, smiley, brilliant, genius, fabulous. But she, because she didn't think the world was fair, she brandished, uh, she basically gave the world the middle finger and went out as a very beautiful, sexy, vulnerable girl anyway. And the world would slap her back and she would say, I do not accept that. I will I will go down with the ship. Um, it's not fair that we live in a world where women are assaulted, catcalled, etc. Now I agree with that. I also believe that it's not a world where a five foot ten uh, man uh, of any any sexuality or gender should be able to, or woman or anybody should be able to walk around and be mugged or. I don't believe that anybody should be in a car and have their car carjacked. I don't believe anybody should have a store with a smash and grab. I don't believe anybody should be uh, held up at gunpoint by a 12-year-old on Capitol Hill who has a revolver or a little Glock. I do not believe that anybody should in any way be assaulted, catcalled, chastised. I don't even believe crazy right-wing supremacists should be called fascist Nazi uh, degenerates. Like, I believe everybody should be nice to each other. Um, I believe that you can you can poke your way into a bloody nose. You can poke your way into a black eye. You can poke your way into a war with Russia. So, enough said. 
So I believe there's a lot of benefits in terms of Gray Man. I believe back to yep, yesterday's episode, I believe that it's really extremely important uh, to um, try to keep your uh, craziest crazy flag. And now I say it again, a just world would be a world where you can walk into school in a Hello Kitty onesie. And you can walk into high school in a Hello Kitty onesie as a um, uh, 14-year-old man, uh, boy, and not get bullied. Right? I believe that you should be able to walk uh, around... Uh, I should be able to walk around in a teddy uh, and platforms and not be, not be harassed. Um, but... What if it still happens? What if the world will never be uh, mature enough, my, or my, as my dad pronounced it, mature enough to not take any? As you know from, um, uh, uh, from grammar school, people will take any difference and make fun of it. It doesn't even have to be a gross thing. It doesn't have to be farty McFart pants or or pissy McPiss pants, or poopy McPoop pants, or ac uh, acne McAcne face, or it doesn't have to be stinky McStink butt. It doesn't have to be any of those things. It, um, it could be just the slightest thing. And the closer you get to uh, physical perfection, quote-unquote, the more detail-oriented the judgments are going to be. Um, as you remember from seeing uh, Mean Girls, I'm sure y'all have seen Mean Girls, is even the Mean Girls were sniping at each other, and they were the most beautiful, popular girls in the school, right? Um, if you end up becoming a ballerina, or becoming a model, uh, or anything, um, you're just going to become more and more aware become an actor. You just become more and more aware how um, far from perfect you are. And then perfection changes. And then uh, your perfection that you were getting surgery and treatments and starving yourself and so forth doesn't mean anything because perfection is Lizzo and not, um, I don't know, heroin chic anymore. Not uh, you know, I don't know, not 1980s, uh, Sports Illustrated, but, uh, but, but 2020s Sports Illustrated. So, I always think that you need to hide your superpower, uh, because just in the same way that when you get a concealed carry permit and you have deadly force on your body, you need to make sure that everybody around you doesn't freak out. It is your pledged promise to the sheriff's department that you will conceal your firearm so that only you know. You won't even tell the people you're with. You will tell nobody except the police officer who might pull you over in a car that you are carrying, and the only time you are allowed to ever draw that weapon is if you intend to fire at someone who's attacking you, you feel threatened for your life, and only center mass, and only enough times until that threat is stopped. So, that could be one time, that could be 15 or 17 times, right? So, I think, and this might be someone who grew up in Hawaii and went to school in a an equalization uniform. In other words, everybody had to wear um, uh, dress shoes, dark dress shoes, uh, slacks or khakis, and a school issued aloha shirt with the you know with. Um, Either when I was in high school, it was like different pastel colors, and when I was in elementary school, it was like etchings of the school and the campus and so forth. So you knew people who went to intermediate school, 7th through 7th and 8th grade, by their different uniform, and then from ninth to 12th grade, you wore uh, a 
basic, we call it a loa shirt, but it was basically a plain shirt, either um, uh, just like Henley style, like where you put it, it was cotton, it wasn't stretchy, it went over your head, and it was either buttoned at your collar, like a polo shirt, or it was all the way buttoned down with short sleeves and loose fitting. So... There is very little ways to differentiate yourself. The only way you're able to differentiate yourself is by the contributions that you were giving to the world. What it does is it offered a lot of equity, right? Like the rich kids and the poor kids didn't know who was who. Some rich kids were able to signify based on things like their car or if they had a car or, you know, getting to know them off campus. But on campus, it wasn't, you know, a fashion show every day. It also made it easier for the poor parents who were struggling to be able to buy a, a suite of, um, of clothing, of uniforms, and not have to worry about, you know, uh, what's cool in Milan, what's cool in Paris, what's cool in New York. So, um, saved money... Uh, was uh, uh, that's equity, right? That is equity. That's not equality. That's literally equity. Everybody dresses the same, right? Uh, it's quite the opposite of um, hoisting your freaky flag. Okay, back to eugenics. Now, I make jokes with my friend about uh, the best way to figure out who the dissidents and the antisocial people are is to empower them enough where they know have the fr- they know they have the freedom uh, to reveal themselves. Right? This happened with the thousand people who revealed themselves and were sent to prison, um, political prisoners for January six. A thousand people were arraigned and convicted and thrown into jail. That's a thousand political prisoners who would have never gone to jail had they not revealed themselves by protesting. Now, if you think that this doesn't work for Black Lives Matter activists, or or if you think that this doesn't work for Antifa activists, or trans activists, or gay activists, or even people who go to gay pride parades, like it depends on how much you fear your government and how much you fear um, the Hoover Hey, Google, was Hoover from the FBI? On the website Britannica.com, they say, Edgar Hoover was a United States government official who served as director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation from 1924 until his death in 1972. He built the agency into a highly effective and occasionally controversial arm of federal law enforcement. People also ask me, what did Hoover have to do with the FBI? Want to hear the answer? No. Hey, Google, did the FBI keep... uh files on Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, Malcolm X? My apologies. I don't understand. Hey, Google, did uh, the FBI have blackmail on uh, for MLK and Malcolm X? On the website WBUR.org, they say, Sam Breiger, byline, from the March on Washington in 1963 to his assassination in 1968, the FBI tapped phones, bugged hotel rooms, paid informants, followed, threatened and blackmailed Martin Luther King Jr. in an attempt to discredit him. Hey Google, did the FBI uh, blackmail Malcolm X? I don't understand. Hey Google, did the FBI track Malcolm X? On the website time.com, they say, nonetheless, Malcolm X was under near constant surveillance by federal and local authorities, as were many civil rights activists. The FBI first opened a file on Malcolm X in March 1953, and closely monitored him over the next decade using surveillance and informants. If you think that you are not being tracked by the FBI, the moment you come out of your gray man, the moment you exhibit any, um, any excitement when it comes to um, uh, human rights, human justice, um, Black Lives Matter, um, uh, climate activism eco-activism, anti-animal abuse activism, an activist for PETA, an activist for for World Day, for May Day, for Gay Pride, for um, anything, for March on Washington, for Pussy Hat, for pro-abortion, for anti-abortion. If you believe that you are not gifting 
your potential enemy with poop, with intel, with evidence to use against you if you ever become an enemy of the state, then I have a bridge to sell you. So, you are in fact opting in towards eugenics movement that could in fact influence your personal bloodline by making yourself a target of any kind of hostility down the road now that people, organizations, private intelligence organizations, corporate organizations, media organizations, hiring organizations, enterprise organizations, government organizations, military organizations, and intelligence organizations, once they get a feel for you, once they know who you are, and they do not trust your goals, your intentions, or your higher ability, you can be iced out, eugenically speaking, from being able to thrive in an environment where you might, in fact, go ahead and thrive and have children and continue your bloodline and explore the world and be successful and develop multi-generational wealth. The, the fact that you're encouraged to fly your freak flag openly and be weird and show who you are and avail your, your oddness and show your counterculturalism and being defiant the big word in terms of the FBI is defiant, right? If you're not willing to play along, you can become an enemy of the state through word or deed or intent or reliability. If you so show that you are in fact antisocial and you have antisocial behavior, and here's the trick. During the Trump administration, it looked like it was safe to come out as a white supremacist and show your white supremacy. Got those people all caught and, and, and set up into their own FBI files. Now, during uh, Biden, it's perfectly okay to, to, um, uh, to go uh, live on the street, to be homeless, to... Uh, to wantonly go into various and sundry Walmarts and take what you want. Like every single one of these people is, is uh, developing their own, their own uh, unindicted rap sheet. You are getting an FBI rap sheet even if you don't come in for any crime. And in the future, these, uh, these files, these FBI files, the, I've got a file on you, I bet you have a file on me, that they kept for MLK Jr., that they kept for Malcolm X, peace be upon him, they will have that on you. They are not your friend. While they might be your ally now, they're only pretending to be your ally so as to allow, so as to give you a freedom to be trusting enough that you show your hand. That you show your hand. Um, I have a friend of a friend of a friend who was part of the FBI sting to um, get everybody out of their hiding place with regards to academics all across the country who had ties to um, the People's Liberation Army uh, who were doing... Uh, who were doing um, academic research from China, China nationals, Chinese people who were here on academic scholarships, who were doing research throughout America. He was part of, um, of, a, um, of a exposure campaign to find a way to expose all of them. Now this is shown up with January 6th. Um, half the people who were in January 6th were were um, uh, were informants, and the other half were feds, and so this exposes people. Now most most uh, most of the radical networks in the '60s and '70s, including Weather Underground and um, and uh, um, uh, Black Panthers and so forth, had informants, had plants. People to your left and right. Uh, people dressed as trans, maybe. Who knows? Uh, black folks. Like, since Black Lives Matter has is mostly, like, white kids, 
white skater Antifa kids. Who knows which one of those are just young-looking uh, junior agents at the FBI making their name or or uh, uh, paid informants that are trying to uh, get out of another uh, federal crime that they might be, you know, caught for. So, as you are exposing your underbelly as you are allowing the entire world to see your innermost innermost as you expose your beautiful inside on the outside just realize that it might be a trap and to uh, avail yourself accordingly and to do your own risk analysis do not opt into a eugenics movement do not uh, opt into a trap that can um, Bait and switch you that can um, uh, con you into making grand life decisions that in fact do not benefit you, do not benefit your family, do not benefit your future, and do not benefit your life on earth. So that's all I can say. Today was pretty preachy, but I love you guys to death and I'll talk to you soon. Mahalo. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.